Let's go a little bit deeper now on the sinking East Coast and the groundwater depletion that is helping to cause it. Joining us now is one of the authors of that paper, Patrick Barnard, a climate and coastal research director at the U.S. Geological Survey, and Cheryl Norton, chief operating officer of East Coast Water a Provider, uh, East Coast Water Provider, American Water. Patrick, welcome, uh, and Cheryl, thank, thank you for joining us as well. Patrick, let me start with you. I believe Diana said in her report that one of the reasons why uh, the land seems to be sinking is that we are pumping more groundwater out of the land. Is, am I understanding that correctly, and why are we having to pump more groundwater out? That's correct, yeah. I mean, we need, you know, water resources for drinking, for irrigation, for industrial uses. And so one of the main sources is pumping water out of the ground. And when we do that, we're essentially um, compressing the, the pore spaces in the sediment and the land settles through time. And that's one of the driving factors. Um, similarly, you know, when we pump oil and gas out of the ground, it has the same issue. We're basically taking fluids out of the ground and that, that ground compresses over time and, and the ground lowers. Um, and we see a lot of that, uh, especially the groundwater side along the East Coast. Why did we not need to pump out as much groundwater in the past than, than we do today? Is it because of drought or what? It's a confluence of factors. You know, obviously our cities are getting larger. We have more of a demand for natural resources and water being sort of order one for what we need. And, you know, we, we get water out of rivers and we get water out of the ground. And these are resources that, that we need to support uh, these urban centers. Cheryl, uh, we heard some solutions from Diana there, including recycling wastewater. Uh, how feasible is that to start those changes and do it soon? Um, yeah, Contessa, it, it, it really is very feasible. In fact, we've done that in a number of locations. We've done both the aquifer recharge as well as reuse of water. So basically, people use water. It goes to the wastewater treatment facility. They clean it up very good. And then um, you can reuse that for things such as um, irrigation and and just not not necessarily for drinking. In a lot of cases, you can't get there quickly for drinking water, but you certainly can get there quickly to use it for irrigation and other purposes, which can take a lot of water. Although of the, certainly the there are places where that's already happening. Orange County, California, for instance, has the Absolutely. technology in place to recycle wastewater into drinking water, and they've already started it. What about the other parts that Diana's story mentions? The fact that the dams, for instance, are keeping sediment from being deposited in the deltas. Yes, the dams will hold the sediment back. And so you have to manage that well so that you can either release the sediment very slowly or you have to do dredging to clean out the sediment behind those dams. In some cases, the dams will fill all the way up and you have to either take the dams down or do an extensive project to remove that sediment. I don't know which of you would rather take this question, so I'll let you get, have a jump ball and fight over it. Uh, we, we clearly waste a tremendous amount of water, leaving the faucet running while we're rinsing dishes or brushing our teeth or whatever. But there is also the, the loss or leakage of water because of deficient infrastructure. Uh, we must lose millions and millions of gallons every minute uh, to, to that. Can, can one of you comment on that? Yeah, I can jump in there. To be honest, we lose across the U.S. about 6 billion gallons of water per day from infrastructure that's not up to where it should be. And there's a, a huge gap in infrastructure needs across the U.S. In fact, the American Society of Civil Engineers would rate the drinking water infrastructure as, as a C plus. And so that's, that's really um, not where we want it to be. And there's over a trillion dollars of investment that's needed all across the U.S. It's a very, the water industry is very fragmented in the U.S. And so it, it requires um, each individual system. There are about 52,000 water systems across the U.S. And it, it requires each of those systems. So consolidation could be a real help there to try to um, utilize similar resources to provide water to multiple communities instead of each community trying to provide it themselves, that makes the infrastructure investment very challenging.